Margie and Lisa show. I'm Margie Wiggin and this is my co-host. I'm Lisa Jackson and I'm glad you can join us tonight and we want you to call in. Do you see the phone? It's kind of a hint that we would love to have your opinion on what we're talking about tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our call-in number is 508-435-7880 or you can email us live at Margie and Lisa. Uh, no, sorry, live at hcam.tv um, so we can have you be part of our conversation. We're going to talk about three things tonight. We're going to start with, um, what is your favorite Hopkinton pizza place? We have three, and um, we'd love to hear what you think. We, we go to pizza places here, and yep. sometimes we eat the pizza, sometimes we don't. We eat other things, but we want to hear what you have to say. Yep. Um, second segment is going to be about the problem with where do we send our recyclables, now that China has um, stronger restrictions on what they accept in terms of paper and plastic. And our third segment is going to be with Greg Hayes, who's from the Framingham Revitalization Project, to talk about our downtown revitalization. So, yeah. start with pizza. With pizza. Well, yep. it's interesting because I was researching it, and I don't eat a lot of pizza, although I do go to Bill's. Exactly. So, Bill's is great, and I actually like their other food. And yeah. Um, Mike was just talking about uh, Carboni's, there's great pizza theirs, which I did not know. Oh. So, like, you know, and I guess they have specialties. You know, when someone orders a special item, they put it on their menu and give it a name and, and things like that. But I, I was like, I didn't realize that we actually had, like, five places that do, that do pizza. Yeah, and in terms of pizza, we have Hiller's. We have um, Marathon, Marathon. And we have Bill's. Bill's. That and are specifically pizza. Yep. Yeah. And then Carboni's serves pizza, and then... Well, um, TJ's and Cornell's. Oh, right. and Cornell's, yeah. yeah. Yep. But I was thinking more, okay, so so it couldn't, it doesn't just have to be what pizza place, then. It could be Any where restaurant. do you like to get pizza in Hopkinton. Right. And uh, Papa Gino's is in Ashland, so right. I don't know that that really counts, but... Right. Um, no, it's curious, and it's, I, pizza, I know when I go home to Idaho, I have fun with the kids to make pizza, because it's like, you can make it any way you want it. So it's, you know, like... You and can I put, know you can do that anywhere. Yeah, that's we true. Yeah, yeah. Too. in Massachusetts, too. <laughs> it's not just an Idaho thing. Right. But I, well, I know it's because my nephews, because they're like, oh, let's make pizza. But, um, you know, kids love pizza. So I think this topic, maybe kids are more interested in their... They have a more of an opinion of pizza. Well, if we have any kids watching, we'd love to hear what you have to say. Otherwise, it's really open to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I know that my son used to deliver pizza for Vinny's. Yep. And uh, when it was in Operation Marcos, was the owner and he loved their BLT pizza Ooh, which was when good. they started to make something besides the traditional you like, know margarita pizza which is the sauce the cheese and the basil basil and tomatoes, right yeah. so the three colors of the flag um and I know that there's a difference between Italian pizza, which is a thinner crust, I think, and Greek think pizza, so. which is a thicker, thicker crust. I think so, But, yeah. you know, please call in and let us know if you guys know more about this than we do. Right. I know um, I liked, the, the, I think the the pizza at Vinny's was a thinner crust, mm -hmm. which meant that you ch you taste what's on top of it more. Right, right. Whereas Bill's is a thicker crust. Yep. Um, I've had pizza from... Marathon as well. It's delicious. Yep. And and Dino's, which is now split into Hillers and Marathon, the two brothers split. Oh, yep. I didn't realize that. Yep. Interesting. And so it's, you know, I I don't notice a lot of difference between Dino's pizza and Bill's pizza, honestly. So the Dino's to me is Hillers and Marathon is pretty much the same. There's just a different characteristic to the shop and to the Interesting. owners. I did not know that. But it's pizza's kind of a... I don't know. I know when I've traveled in other parts of the world, like pizza was always the thing that everybody wanted. Like if you didn't like the food that was in India or whatever. Um, and I, I actually love when I travel eating the local cuisine, but it was always uh, interesting in other parts of the world how they'd make pizza and how, what the dough tasted like and things like that. So I didn't realize that it was really nationwide too, that people like to have different kinds of pizzas, but particularly Americans really kind of have a... A love affair with pizza. <laughs> so yeah, and I think it's interesting that um, it came with the Italian immigrants into New York. Yep, and um, they brought that with them. Yeah. Um, so incorporating some of the things that they had there. Um, Julie says Anzio's during warmer season when they're at Angel's Nursery. That's right. Anzio's oh. Pizza. Thank you very much, Julie. Oh, has nice. a little. Um, 
Um, oh, right. I've seen it. Like it a brick oven or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just warm weather. They're going as long as they can. So okay. they're, they're all season. Yeah. Okay, thank Excellent. you. So Anzio's Pizza at Angel's Nursery, the top of uh, top of the hill. Yeah, by School Street. By School Street and on 135 or um, West, West, West Main, Main Street. Yep. Yep. That's interesting. Brick oven pizza. I remember hearing about that. So do that. they cook it outside? Is that? I think so. Oh. Ah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> The phone booth. It's a mobile brick oven. It's, it's a, a mobile, mobile brick, brick oven, oven, according to the the voices in the corner. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> That's interesting. So I went through a phase where I cooked pizza on my grill. Oh, so nice. which was kind of fun. Tell me about pizza on the grill. I've never heard of so that. So it was it was kind of easy because you don't want to heat up the um, the kitchen in the summer. So I, I yeah, make my own I dough, and then I throw the pizza on the grill and flip it. You know, but wait, cook. so do you put what do you put on the grill first? Um, just olive oil. So I put olive oil on the grill, and then I, I you roll out the pizza dough, and I throw the pizza on the grill, and it's hot, so right. it, it cooks it, and then you flip it over, and then you put your toppings on. So do you have a? Because I know some people put pizza on a on the stone, and I, you put the stone in, in the and oven. Bring it out in the oven. Yeah. Some but, people put it on a pan. Yeah, and the grill, I just put it right on the griddle. On the and on the griddle. Yeah. Yeah, okay, right so on, the a, grates, yeah. oh, the, okay. on the grates. Yeah. Okay. On the grates. I'm so trying you to get imagine the, that the dough might fall down. No, between. if it's hot enough and the uh-huh. texture of the dough, you like stretch it out and you just pull it right on there and it actually works pretty well. And it's fast and it's like, it's fun because you can put all different toppings on it or and whatever. And then you close the top to get the top melted. Yeah. So, because I know people who grill all year. Yeah. They just walk out into the snow and they grill yeah. whatever and they come back in. So you could do a pizza on your grill. Oh, sure. And that's a great idea. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's fun for the kids. I was, especially when the kids were little, I'd have them make their own pizzas, like little small pizzas and different shapes and and stuff like that. So that's like, you We know. make pizza at my house yeah. all the time. It's, out of dough and, yeah, it's um, fun. Yeah, we don't grill it though. So that's one cool. thing that kind of comes up is gluten. So a, right. a lot of people don't eat that. pizza because of the a gluten allergy. Or I know myself, I don't eat a lot of bread products. I make it, but I don't actually, I prefer meat and vegetables and stuff like that. But it's interesting, um, when I was in Idaho, I came up with a, a pizza that I used um, ground well, beef for. Well, the question is, in, in Hopkins, yeah, do yeah. we have any gluten-free pizza here? They do. At Bill's, they have gluten-free. Okay. They have right. gluten-free, and then they... Um, um, I don't know about, I'm sure the other ones do because it's high demand. Right. And usually what's in the gluten-free is they use tapioca flour or, you know mm. what I mean? So they, you know, they have a mixture of flours that make it gluten-free. And I've made gluten-free pizza before. Right. But it's, I just didn't know if there if there was some available here. Um, cause my I know daughter, Bill's has it. Yeah, good. So, okay. So Bill's does have so it. So if you guys have had gluten-free pizza at Bill's or anywhere in yep. town, yep. call in, let us know which one is your favorite gluten-free Bills is the best. Bills is the best. Bills says is the, the best. voice in the corner. Yeah, Bills is. So yeah, so that's another thing that you know, like Bills has the best gluten-free pizza. <laughs> right. Cool. Right. All right. And so the other thing is, I know that um, Bills has started to to expand a little bit yes. into different types of toppings. You know, following on what Vinny's did. Yeah. With the the um, BLT pizza. Right. I know uh, one of my favorites is feta cheese and spinach oh, pizza nice. is so good. That's good. And then um, Hawaiian pizza. So yep. you get some, some of that pineapple ham. and the ham. It's not really ham. I don't know what that Canadian is. Canadian bacon. Canadian or, bacon is yep. thinner yep. With, uh, with pineapple. Yep. 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 Or mushrooms are good. I know. My daughter loves the veggie pizza. So if we get it from Bill's, we get like all the vegetables she could put on it. Yeah. So the veggie pizza. And then so I does get, she want the onions too? Yeah, she wants onions, peppers. Yeah, everything. She likes yeah. all the veggie the pizza, and they put it. They put a lot on it, and like I get the meat lovers pizza if I get a pizza. Yeah. And I actually, I you know it. So I what's like, on the meat lovers pizza? Whatever um, meats they have. So like you know, prosciutto. Ha- yeah, hamburger, sausage, sausage pepperoni, prosciutto, sausage, ham, anything like that. So it's it's pretty good though. But um, one thing I notice about Bills is they have a quite a extensive menu. Yes. So and they they're not your normal pizza parlor. So I actually enjoy going there and seeing at the bar. Lots of people from town go there and Sometimes hang out. Sometimes we go there after the show. Yeah, and figure out what <laughs> what we want to do for the next week. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's right. You know, I think it's kind of a nice little staple downtown. And that I know tonight we'll be talking about downtown revitalization. But Bill's Pizza is kind of a, you know, a 
destination, particularly for middle schoolers. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, oh, absolutely. Yeah, because like when they early release day. Yeah. And I'm hoping that um, they keep you know the menu obviously that they have. Yeah. But adapt with whatever popular things. Uh, sometimes people have barbecue chicken on their pizza. Right. Right. One of the things I love is their grilled chicken salad. Oh, because yeah. Because they're, whatever they do to, to grill the chicken, the chicken I don't is know good. what they do, it's so good. It's good. And then um, they have uh, those little, the peppers that are really good. I forget what they're called. And um, it, the, the salads good. are great, grilled chicken. Yeah, they are good. So so Greek salad with grilled chicken. You know what they have Steven also. Stephen and Pat like our Facebook video. Thanks, Thank Stephen and Pat. Um, I get the gyro salad. Uh-huh. So, so, which is actually, it's, the gyros are good also, but they do gyro meat with the salad, and that's actually one of my favorites, too. What is gyro meat? It's... From it's, a gyro... Yeah, there's... Animal? No. Nah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure what Bill's does, but I know it's actually, and if they, I don't know if they do it this way or not, but a traditional gyro, you have like a big, like, tower of ground meat that rotates, and it's generally beef and lamb lamb is traditional uh-huh. and sometimes there's veal mixed in or some pork in there and then as it rotates they take slices off the the gyro so it's like a. I big... need to see a video of that okay yeah. um, <laughs> so. so Mike says Cornell's has the best specialty pizza especially the Mac attack yes I have heard of that yes I don't know if that's like a Big Mac on a pizza or if that's macaroni on a pizza right I don't... Big Mac on a pizza is the clarification right. from the voices in the corner. Yeah, so, that's interesting. So Big Mac, that's that's hamburger, onion, lettuce, tomato, two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, <laughs> onions on a sesame seed bun. Right, and then well, no, I guess they have the Italian or the um, dressing that they put on it. Or that's Thousand the special Island. sauce. Yeah, the special yes. sauce. That's they so don't tell us what the special sauce right. is because then we can make it at home. Yeah, exactly. but it is a lot like. Russian dressing, right? Right, right, because it's kind of orange looking and stuff like that. But and apparently there's a police officer from Milford that goes there and has his own pizza with lots of garlic, and they named it after him because he orders it all the time, which I think is kind of neat. At Cornell's, yeah, yeah, or not Cornell's or uh, um, Carboni's. Oh, is it Cor? It's Cornell's. Oh, thank you. (laughs) We're getting a lot of participation from the booth in there, and it's it's Mike Tarosian. Yeah, the voice in the corner is this time is Mike Tarosian. Which is it's great. Not the corner, it's the control room. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's the control Jim, room. Jim likes to call it the control room. <laughs> yeah, we can't sorry, do this Jim. alone. We, we, we would be nothing without them. The controlling voices. Oh, sorry. The <laughs> voices from. <laughs> anyway, funny. thank you guys. Um, so, Cornell's has back attack, has officer specialty, whatever his name is, pizza? Yeah, yeah. And it's. What? Well, I think um, the kids, it's so funny when they. When they when I go down with the kids to, and I have a middle school, I'm sorry, I'm kid centric right now, but they, they love going to Bill's just to kind of hang out too. And right. it, you know, they go. Well, I think it's partly the location. Sure. Everyone seems to default to town, to the center of town, to town common. Right. Which is why I personally think that center school should be a youth center because oh, that's yeah. where they go by default. Right. They but all anyway, walk down there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's location, but also when you walk in the front, there's a soda machine right there oh. across from the cash register. You know, so if they pay for the soda, they can just put their little cup underneath and get whatever of the eight different choices of oh, soda they want. Oh, I never even want. noticed that. There are the ice cream <laughs> machines, right? Uh, ice cream, you know, coolers right there. Oh. So, so it's all of the snack heaven for is right there. middle schoolers. Right? Middle school <laughs> snack heaven. And then there's... Yogurt Beach right. next door, which right. is not pizza at all. Right. But it definitely there's it attracts a draw. the kids, yeah, definitely. But it's you know, it's it's interesting the the downtown. You know, like I it's nice to see that kids go down there, but I hear that I have I know a few people that work at um Hopkinton Drug and they are not happy with Middle schoolers invade. Well, CVS too. I've seen some kids playing. Yeah, kind of like a hide and seek in right. between the aisles in there. It's a little chaotic. Right. But there are video cameras, by the way, kids, so you can yeah. see what you're doing. Right. Um, it's funny. But yeah, so I think in terms of Bill's location is great. Right. For pizza, Marathon is now in the center too. Right. I, I, I don't. I'm not aware of how many kids go there how many middle schoolers head in there or right. high schoolers head in there on early release right um it's a great location nice guy runs it yeah I, I do see people going in and out it probably does a great 
delivery business. Right, right. And it's more of a specialty pizza, right? It's more I think like the so. thinner pizza. It is thinner. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's good. It's nice that we have so many um, pizza places in Hopkinton and actually that have expanded to other types of food. And and it it's a nice opportunity for us to <laughs> have access to it. Right. And so. I think if... <clears throat> If our town can support all of that pizza, right, <laughs> right. you know, more power to the right. business owners right. who have found a way to, to answer a need or a want in our community, right. you right. know, um, so that's great. That's so yeah, cool. let us know what your favorite one is. Um, we know some people are watching, so Stephen and Pat, let us know what your favorite yeah. pizza is. And the Anyone corner control room. sitting out in this area who might have an opinion, About let pizza? us know. Yeah. Or the control room. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Thoughts? Sounds like Bill's is a favorite of uh, Jim. Yeah, it's it's and, good. And uh, and sounds like Mike likes the Mac Attack. Yep, yep. And yep. I didn't realize Carboni's had so much stuff. I always kind of forget about them a little bit, but they're a nice little restaurant on eighty five towards the state park. And yeah. you know, I do like Bill's, but the reason it's my favorite is I have people in my family who eat gluten free. Yeah. And it's always. You, would you like no, to take a seat? No, it's okay. always been. You know, like a step down. Yeah. But lately, there are a couple places, but Bill's is by far the yeah. best. It's like most like a regular pizza. Right, right. Thank That's you. good to know, though. Thank you, Jim. That, yeah. that was, I love that you called in and told us that. So Jim's what saying... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll have... Uh, no. So yeah. Jim, Jim's saying... Oh, thanks, Jim. So Jim's saying that... Um, yeah, gluten-free option at Bill's definitely makes that very appealing. My daughter, my oldest, is now gluten-free. Yep. So I, I love knowing that that we can get a great gluten-free pizza. Because some gluten-free stuff, yeah, it's it a tastes little little, funky. little yeah. too ricey, yeah. you know what I'm saying, which means it's no taste. Right, right. So we just, ugh. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. Something about the texture sure. and that needs to be as close as possible. Um, right. Yeah. But um, I know from Papa Gino's for work, I've ordered gluten free pizza there, oh, cool. and it, it wasn't it wasn't bad. You know what I mean? I tasted it and it tasted okay, but mm -hmm. it's hard when you like the crust, the flavor. The exactly. crust is a big part of the pizza, right? You know? And also the texture. Yeah. But sometimes it's kind of crunchy. And sometimes right. it's soft. Whatever the person prefers. Right. right. All right. Well, it sounds like um, Bill's is a favorite for gluten free, but you could also go to Papa Gino's. Yeah. It sounds like specialty pizzas would be Marathon. And um, Bill's now has a few specialty pizzas and and, and the and the, Carbonis and Carbonis and then Cor um, and Cornell's. Cornell's obviously yep and Hillers and yeah. so I apparently we have a lot of choices for pizza choices. yeah <laughs> and um, one ten grill may have pizza I'm not sure oh probably not sure yeah maybe I don't think Pantai does no I don't no. think so <laughs> all right so that's the end sadly of our first segment and we'll be back to talk about the um, China restriction on recyclables and what do we do now? What does E.L. Harvey do with all of their thousands of piles of uh, recyclable waiting to go somewhere? Right. We'll be back. Thank you. It's on the common. Of, mm -hmm. The brass, pl a bronze plaque. This was put in position at the end of August and the dedication was held at the Congregational Church across the street. And they would have held it on the common except that the weather was very bad. So. Uh, this, this project will go a long way to bringing those same benefits to the town of Hopkinton. So thank you all and I look this forward week to on HKM. continued development. Mass Dot holds a public hearing Thank about you. the downtown corridor project uh, next, at I'd the like senior center. Joe Bennett, acting police chief, to come up. I know this project has began in 1957. I've only been participating with the police department since the early 90s on this project, and we're very excited to see this come to fruition. This week on the Golden Pan, Lisa and Mary connect us with Don and Beverly Moberg to make shish kebabs and pilaf. The meat gonna cook faster. The meat will cook faster. Okay, so we should put the chicken on first. Yeah. All right, Mary. So we're just putting it. So you said that it's closer to the edge. Right. So we can have so easy can... access to okay. that little. We want to be able to turn on. Twisting Welcome back to our second segment on the Margie and Lisa show. 
And we are so happy to have with us Jonathan Phelps, who is usually on um, behind the scenes in Hopkinton Crier and also Metro West Daily News, correct? Yes. Excellent. So it's both. Yep. Yeah. You're expanding your... Yeah, I, I like to say the Metro West Daily News. <laughs> right. It's usually that. Yeah. But then I noticed you here um, on this one. So good for you. That's yeah. great. Thanks for having me. Well, yeah. I, I saw this. I saw this article come across, I think it was in the in Facebook, and it was a Metro West Daily News yeah. feed, and I said, what? Yeah. Because I faithfully recycle. My recycle bin yeah. is, overflowing. you know, overflowing. Minus. And <laughs> and I always, and I actually bring recyclables into school and give it to the art teacher. So if it looks useful, I, I, I can't throw it out. I have to give it to someone who can use it. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Throwing a piece of paper in the trash just doesn't seem right. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, I was telling my I was telling my colleagues I've never covered a story that had where an international policy had such an impact on a local business. So, Unbelievable. Right. Um, I don't know if people know what we're talking about yet. No. <laughs> yeah. so, let, so let's give do a you little wanna, background. Do you want to yeah. say it or do you want me to read your fabulous article? Don't read the whole thing. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I did some underlying. Okay, give, give right. a summary so here. The fabulous article um, from the January fifth uh, Hopkinton Crier. So E.L. Harvey has nearly 3,000 bales of mixed paper yep. that can't go anywhere. 3, because 000. China imposed strict guidelines that make it nearly impossible for recycled materials to ship out. For two months, 2,000 pound bales are stacked in the parking lot. Trailers are full, the building's full, full, um, and they don't know what to do with it. Um, certain types of used Plastics are going to be banned by 2018. Restrictions on types of scrap paper allowed in. World Trade Organization says new policies are intended to improve environmental conditions within the country, which is laudable. That's a great goal. But what do we do with the paper and plastic? You know, it's quite the conundrum. Yes. Um, because they've been sending it to China for so long. Mm -hmm. and, and people are wondering... Um, you know, China sends all these toys and all this yeah. nice Some product do. to us, or the, pro like the products that we want, and and we ship recycled paper to them, yeah, and bottles and stuff. And and they, some of the things that they use the recycled paper to make are coffee filters, egg cartons, napkins, insulation, diapers, hmm. and those are all things that we use. Um, so people might wonder why they they would want it. Yeah. Also and going that far, I mean, like you're trying to lessen your footprint and you send stuff. <laughs> you're using fuel to right, ship it there. Right, right. Yeah. So that's kind of an interesting, I was thinking about that. I'm like, I didn't realize we sent all our paper goods to China. Yeah, but so yeah, go ahead on what they So yeah. for so long they've been sending it to China, they've been kind of relying on that. So there's mm -hmm. not... The, there is, um, there are some mills in the United States and Pennsylvania. Uh, I think there's one in Georgia and Indiana, but not enough for this demand. Yeah. Um, and there, there's also mills in Vietnam and Thailand and other countries yeah, surrounding Japan China, also. Uh, yeah. in oh, no. India. Mm -hmm. um, so oh, the the problem is those other mills just cannot meet the demand of what's being shipped over. Right. Um, the other thing I, I read was that um, China doesn't want to take plastic that hasn't been washed, rinsed. And I'm guessing the three of us rinse our plastic before yeah. we throw it in the recycle. And I know some point I knew that I wasn't supposed to put pizza boxes. So I don't put pizza boxes because right. they're covered with food. You know, and it's and it doesn't, they, you have to clean it. I don't even know how they would recycle it unless they... Yeah, I know for me, I never know what to do with uh, peanut butter. <laughs> it just doesn't right. ever come out. Right. Well, but <laughs> yeah, I work really hard on that. Yeah. It smells like peanut butter. Yeah, no. um, I can tell you how. <laughs> yeah, but I think the thing is, mo a lot of communities are doing uh, what's called single stream recycling. I know they do it in Hopkinton. Yeah, we just started that. And everything just gets dumped into the same bin. Yeah. And any little bit of like soiled paper or uh, pizza boxes stuff like that are just not not acceptable they can't use it yeah. and um the industry standards about like three to five percent contamination in any given load oh. but china's only allowing a half a percent oh. so it's so dramatic that they're not able to meet that yet right um, unless they, they're sorting or yeah, whatever yeah. they can't 
Wow. And people so, need to be more aware of it. If that's the new right. restriction, people need to be more aware of it on our end before we put it in. We just throw the peanut butter in the, you right. know, tr- in the recycle or the pizza box. Right. We need to know it's not. Go- it's going to sit at E.L. Harvey because they can't ship it out. Right. And so, then, oh, sorry, on the town website, actually, there was very good information on what you could actually recycle and what they, and I was very interested that they won't take your trash if you don't recycle, which I did not know that. <laughs> so, well, I like it. Yeah, I do too. The thing is, the whole idea <laughs> is um, they lose money on trash collection because it, it essentially goes to a landfill and it, yeah. they don't make money on trash, yeah. but they make money on recyclables. So Really? So the whole idea... Because China will pay for that or would have yeah. paid for that. So the whole idea is, and I know when, when the town was switching to single stream recycling the whole idea was to recycle more so there was less trash and now it's becoming a problem with el harvey um but there's no direct impact for hopkinton just yet because they have a five-year contract oh my gosh with el harvey yeah so, so el harvey is obligated to take hopkinton's recycling but the problem might come when the town needs to renegotiate Oh yeah. For another five years. Yeah, they're gonna say no. So so my my thought is let's challenge, let's get a contest for high school engineering students. What how what can we creatively make with these right. bales of trash? Right. We could make housing, we could do all kinds of interesting things with that. Um, what I wanna say here is that they they're banning twenty four categories of recyclables and solid waste. Um, it's called in Chinese it's called young Laji, and I know it goes up and down, so I'm probably doing that wrong, but it's Yang Laji. It's called foreign garbage, and it mm. applies to plastic textiles and mixed paper. Um, and then t- China, the dominant market, is what, as you said, 87% of recycled plastic collected was exported directly or indirectly to China, Japan, and the U.S. Um, re- rely, I'm sorry, to China. Japan mm. and the U.S. rely on China to buy recycled plastic. So it's a big change. Yeah. Um, the problems are, if you go to energy recovery and burn it, or l- go to landfill, right. um, you know, could generate electricity. There are some things they could do with it. They're just not doing it yet because it's so, yeah. such We're a recent change. We're accustomed to China taking it, right? Or, yep. So well, they pay for it? Is that yeah, what? They yeah, pay they about, buy it because they're going to use it to then make right. something to sell. I had read somewhere that it's like $60 a bale. And they have 3,000 bales, so if you do the math, there's a thousands of dollars worth of paper right. stacking up. And E.L. Harvey's not in the business of stockpiling paper. They right. they have no place to put it know, or store no. it or keep it they dry. Sell it to yeah. somebody. So it's just, like, deteriorating there, yeah, like right. degrading, so it's I losing its value. Right, um, retracting rodents yeah. if there are pizza boxes in there. I think the the major concern, though, is just, like, losing momentum when it comes to curbside recycling. Yeah. yeah. Because it's taken years and years to get people accustomed right. to the recycling that they've done. So right, that's, and if that's it's a not a good thing, thing right now, it, it, if it's just sitting there and it can't be used for something productive. Is Harvey thinking about how to combat this? Because this, I mean, very quickly that is going to just keep growing and growing and... I mean, uh-huh. is there, do they have a plan B? Yeah, they, <laughs> so. they, they told me that they need to figure something out because it can't stay there. Right. And ideally, they would want to be making money off of, they, they call it a commodity. Sure. So they, they want to make money off of this sure. product. And, and that's yep. the whole idea. That's why they take it from the town. And, do we and, know um, what communities do recycling well? Uh, Hopkinton, I Hopkinton <laughs> was. Uh, we just right. we just have that brick wall. Uh, oh, yeah, I it's know. A wall. I know. Um, Framingham does a really good job, and yeah. uh, most all recycling somehow ends up at El Harvey in in Westboro and Hopkinton, though. So yeah. Oh really? So, so they're so, kind of a processing. So yeah. you you brought a video or sent a video? Is that yeah. something that would be this is a good time to show that? Good time. Yeah. All right. So um, Jonathan has included a video in his. Um, being with us and and hopefully they can run that now hopefully
got all we can there. We can probably go this way a little bit more. Well, what's, what's happened is, is the Chinese government has put in place very strict specifications on the import of residential mixed paper into China. And this started back in the beginning of November. The, it went into effect on January 1st, but people were afraid to ship. The brokers were afraid to ship into China because the, it takes three months to get a container over there. So this is kind of kind of a, a process that we're going through right now. We're looking at probably uh, two months worth of paper on both sides here that, uh, that we've accumulated. We're hoping that the markets open up. But if the markets don't open up in, in six months to nine months, we're going to be pretty much at capacity on what we can store here at our facility. And that means we might have to curtail some of the collection programs that we have out for municipalities. Thanks, Jonathan, for uh, including that in our, our talk here. So there is quite a challenge in um, six to nine months, you said? or Yeah, said? Ben, ben in the video, Ben Harvey, the president, said they have about six to nine months of storage space. They're pretty much maxed out. So right. Well, and probably the paper degrades being outside. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not as... Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. If it degrades, that, then maybe that's their answer. But right. um, I know we have uh, Greg Hayes, who's our next guess was mentioning um, something called biomass where they converted into um, energy energy yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, I think there are creative things we can do with it I know that um, Scientific American had an article um, last uh, October talking about limiting plastics going forward um, limiting use of plastic bags which we talked about in yeah. another segment with Amy Groves um, France bans some disposable plastic items um, in Britain uh, pub chain Weatherspoons bans a uh, one-use plastic drinking straws. Right. You yeah. know, maybe we're going to go back to Puritan times. Everyone had their own mug, and then yeah, they just I wiped think, it out, and then they used it again. I don't but know. I think, I think, think that's is, better. I mean, I yeah. think we, we need to be responsible consumers, and right. why are we producing so much? I mean... I don't, I don't, Junk. You, yeah, I mean. <laughs> yeah. So, so when I was interviewing Ben Harvey, he called it uh, hopeful recycling. Oh, people, I like it. Pe people just think like any anything that's oh. plastic, anything that's paper can right. be thrown oh. in there and, oh. and they want to think they're making a difference by doing that. Yeah, they're making and a lot, a lot of it just ends up being thrown out at the plant anyway. And um, the video we just saw was is their single stream recycling facility and what happens is the first conveyor belt separates glass and then cardboard, paper, plastics mm -hmm. keep going through and then the plastics get taken out. And then you saw the workers like manually pulling stuff out. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. And, Labor intensive. And the only way to lower that contamination level is either to have more equipment or to have more workers, which just isn't financially right. Right. viable. So we have a question from Colleen who says, can any other country besides China accept it? I know you said Vietnam and Korea. No, not Korea. Vietnam and Thailand, Thailand. India. Um, there, because they make products like egg cartons and diapers and. Yeah, I think. But but the thing is, they're not set up. They're not designed to take the right. mass of what China was taking. Mm -hmm. And I think what a lot of people think is going to happen now is more mills are going to open up around China, and they're going to take. Uh, Basically, China's going to take the refined version oh, that, that's then, not then, contaminated. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're limiting what they'll take, and then other people will jump on board that. And Kelly, thank you for liking our Facebook video. And I, I had read somewhere that just China doesn't want to be known as, like, the dumping ground. Well, of, I don't right. blame them. I think it's gross, personally. Yeah, it's <laughs> kind of crazy when you think about it, just that footprint thing again, just sending all that stuff. We make a mess here, and we send it to the other side of the world to be you know I mean yeah. granted while they're using it it's good and it's turned into something productive but then you think about what's you know what's the actual footprint of that and like that hopeful recycling kind of idea that you talk about is but it, it's not is it's, it as is it as beneficial well no hopeful I mean, recycling is I think this is recyclable and you throw right. it in the bin <laughs> yeah. right so this is talking about the other um problems some of the problems are um Microbeads, which are in cosmetics and you know exfoliate, oh, use these microbeads to exfoliate oh, your really? skin. Those don't biodegrade, and they go into the ocean, and the and the poor sea animals are dying because it's floating around in there. I didn't even and, think of that. I didn't well, even it's in know. this article from Scientific American, and then we know That's that those the beer the can, the eight, six pack yeah. circle things oh, get yeah. stuck. Um, so they're banning lots of things like that. Um, 
And this says several other EU nations, like South Korea, New Zealand, also implementing bans. So it looks like things are going to shift. Um, That's good. And then some positive things. Um, recycled plastic could be used to provide chemicals to petrochemical sector. So pull all that, that bad stuff out of them to use as fuels. Food packaging, ooh, I don't know if I want my food in that. But, um, <laughs> so that's a possibility. There are some positive things, but there needs to be some attention paid to Well, we need to think a little forward thinking. I mean, yeah, exactly. to me it's surprising that we don't have kind of that backup plan that we were talking about that it's, you know, like the past paper like stacking up and like what do you you know, like what it's do you do with that? Yeah. I mean that's in what do we do as consumers? Like what are or people that throw away recyclables, what is I mean, is there messaging that needs to go out to us? Obviously yeah. we need to produce less bring up bring a canvas back. <laughs> yeah. To do less trash shopping. and things like that. But like is yeah. there I mean it just, it feels yeah. very hope, you know, like there's no answer to he, it. He just kept telling me, you know, pay attention to what the towns and cities are telling you. Don't, don't yeah. try to stretch it. Um, right. Yeah. So I think another layer to this is um, Mass DOP, uh, DEP has. Um, Environmental protection. Yeah, they, they have restrictions on what, what can go in the waste stream as well. Like I know a lot of like commercial food waste can't go in the waste stream. Cardboard can't go in the waste stream. Yep. And so it's not as easy as like, oh, we're just going to huck these bales into the trash now. Right. right you can't. There, there's a process mm. that to get it to, um, to get it to one of those um, incinerators or something like that. And then E.L. Harvey doesn't make, I don't think they would make any money on that, so oh. I'm not sure though. Well, and then they come back to us. They, yeah, they would, yeah, we'd have to pay more money. Yeah. For... Right, or we and we couldn't recycle anymore. Right. Um, I also had an article from Recycling Today uh, in August of August uh, 2017. Twenty-four types of materials will be prohibited from entering China, including several types of post-consumer plastic scrap, one grade of unsorted paper, several types of used textiles and metal slags containing vanadium and then at the bottom it talked about <laughs> I don't know what that is I don't know what that is like that's a word that I haven't it's heard a, of before. it's a metal it's a metal so um, vanadium is is a type of yeah. mineral that's used in some metals that they don't want interesting I don't know what it looks like exactly it's probably silver colored um, so anyway so they don't want PET they don't want polyethylene they don't want polypropylene they don't want polystyrene they don't want PVC or rigid plastics yeah so that what you know that covers yeah. so many things that I I don't I don't well, know what they actually would still accept. As consumers, we should yep. stop buying things that come in. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Those yeah. those things. Yeah. yeah, like I, you know, particularly even now that we talk about this a lot on our show, I'm like, as a consumer, do I really have to have that thing that's packaged that way? And that's a and, great way to end this. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do we really have to have think about it before you buy it in plastic? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, my, my last thought is yeah. just um, they Yale Harvey might have to stop taking recycling at some point and like it Ooh. is a serious thing scary um so and we're we'll, we'll have to see giant how, blue <laughs> container we'll have to see how it plays out so. yeah. yeah thank you so thank much you. for yeah, joining us for thank you for coming this week on wake up and smell the poetry listen to music from musicians junko agawa and rick goggin opinion, just one voice can speak the truth just one voice can make a difference. Just one heart. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. I'm Gunny. I'm Haley. Hi, I'm David. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love H Camp. And I want to be a camp. We love H Camp. And I volunteer for H Camp Team. I watch HCAM TV. And I love HCAM TV. I love HCAM TV. We love HCAM TV. Woo! This week on Highlights from the Hill, Jim Cousins and Dr. Kathy McLeod sit down with a couple of school committee members. I was considering school committee. She was very encouraging, but she was like, just the one thing you don't ever want to have to do is hire a new superintendent. <laughs> and 
<laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I mean, we have a really good one, so I should be okay, right? Welcome back to the Margie and Lisa show, and we are here with Greg Hayes from Framingham, mm -hmm. and uh, he's going to help us understand revitalization of a, of a downtown, as in what you did with Framingham. Well, let me clarify. I am not a current member of the, of the revitalization uh, committee, but I've agreed to join them. I was a member of the original Downtown Solutions Committee when I had an office in downtown Framingham. So just want to get that clear before I get myself in trouble. <laughs> yeah, no, but so, and, and this is just me being silly, but it sounds like Star Wars. So we got the, the middle three segments first, then we did the, so you're going to be I've agreed the, to, to, future, I've agreed yeah. to participate. In the past. I was in the past. Got it. Yeah. And I've been involved with some activities over the last few years that have fit into the vision I had many years ago. Awesome. Back in 94, 95 is when I had the office down there. Mm -hmm. And I had some ideas as to what it would take to help revitalize the right. downtown. It's such a different area. Oh, I yeah. mean, I've worked in the town hall um, over the last... 13 years or so down there, and it's it's mm -hmm. what a big difference. Mm -hmm. yeah, so can like, you share some of your Well, at, at the time, um, I had the office, and we were working on a, a project actually in South Southbridge mm -hmm. that was a government contract where they were, they were bringing in a project that mm -hmm. renovated the old American Optical Building, mm -hmm. and the government came in and built a training facility, mm -hmm. and we were part of that contract, mm -hmm. and the purpose was to retrain DOD employees to work under a unified Department financial structure. Of defense. defense. Mm -hmm. But what, what came from that was you've got a new hotel, mm -hmm. you've got new jobs, yeah. mm -hmm. and now you've got a destination in your, this town that was pretty much dormant in right. many ways. So in Framingham, I got involved with the CDC, uh, the Community Development Corporation, and I came up with a concept that was called the Corporate Community Collaborative, and the idea there was to help companies fill entry-level positions by, by right. allocating training dollars to work with Framingham State, to work with the town, or the now a city, and to the corporations to actually train people to fill those jobs. Right. That was one of the things that we did. But the so, other I, So Framingham residents and students would be encouraged and supported. To participate in that program. Wonderful. Excellent. The, uh, again, the idea is to bring jobs, because if you bring jobs, you bring people. Mm -hmm. Then you have to have the infrastructure. And you have to have places where you can go eat and you can go get entertained. Right. So what? And it has to be safe because right, downtown was well, for wanna, a long time. I want to talk about yeah. that because what, <laughs> I, what, what I, my original idea was there was the old uh, Woolworth building, and my yes. idea was a was a concept to in, to basically create a cabaret international and the Culinary Institute of Framingham. So I wanted a cooking school in the basement, mm. and I wanted a five star restaurant upstairs, and I wanted to be able to. In, in embrace all the different cultures within Wonderful. Framingham. Right. Which Brazilian, are, Italian, right. Russian, Ecuador and maybe every well, night the, the, chef, the, 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 the students would prepare prefixed meals for that whatever that culture might be and we might then, then, oh, and then basically incorporate that with entertainment that fit into that, that same uh, uh, basically concept. Mm -hmm. So if it's a Wednesday night, it was Italian night, mm -hmm. we might have Tony Bennett performing in the cabaret. Nice. But I wanted to have a very upscale place to basically create the attraction, to right. create a magnet. Right. right. And so what's and happened... And set a standard a little bit. Right. To yeah. raise the bar. Right. Mm -hmm. So what's happened, and that's how I met her, Yeah, actually, that is how we met. was that there was a little place that began, to, that I kept driving by, it's called Fo... Fo, de, Fo it's called Fa, Fa, de, Fa Deco. Yes. I call yeah. it Fo de Cal. Yeah. But yeah. I kept seeing it, and I stopped in one night, and I began to talk to uh, the, the bartender, yeah. Yeah. and he said that they wanted to do entertainment. And I said, you know... I really like that because that was one of my ideas yes. right down the street. Yeah. Right. So you guys are like a little magnet. So over the last three years, and it's the, good food. I mean, it's great. The company, the company that I that I that I've helped to put together, called Inceptive Entertainment, uh, we've been booking all the music oh, for the last three years at Faux de Cal. Yeah. Okay. So it's become a place that people are now beginning to come back downtown yeah. yes. and deal with. Now to go to your other subject. Yes. <laughs> Framingham has had a historic. Oh, I'm sorry, a, a, a tainted or a, a, a past that has been stuck with a them. A reputation. A reputation yeah. that has to be overcome. So they've built the infrastructure. They've got the infrastructure fixed up. Yep. They've got little magnets that are popping up around, uh, around the town. Mm -hmm. But re what really has to happen is people have to address the issue that nobody wants to talk about. 
the attitudes that people have about people that don't, that don't look like them. Right. Okay? You've got to overcome that fear sure. that people have about going downtown because it's really, it's insignificant. But right. I have to say, and this is just from my perspective driving through there, mm-hmm. the thing that would concern me mm-hmm. isn't that someone looks different. It's that there are people that look homeless or right. they look like they're drug addicts. Right. So that's, that's not someone different. That's someone that... But could you got to remember the Salvation like Army's there, neighbor, so there's but someone who has fallen ex- on hard times, exactly. maybe yeah. trying to rob someone for money. Maybe we don't know. Well, that's the problem. People and people assume that that's know, what they, just, that they're they're going to do that, that's how and that looks. necessarily. I mean, if you I've I've lived in New York, I've lived in Boston, I've yeah. lived in various places. You want to go to some rough places? Yeah, it's not downtown Framingham. No, it's Framingham not. is been, yeah. mild mannered compared to places that are out there. But people have an image. Based on their right. yeah. their ignorance about what happens to people, why we are in the situation we are in today, right. racially, yeah. economically, yes. and until you address that issue mm-hmm. and educate people to get past those fears and insecurities yeah. that they might have, you're never going to be able to turn the place around. So, other than the infrastructure and having all the places to go, mm-hmm. there needs to be an educational process right. that happens to get people well, to to understand. Right the differences that we have amongst ourselves and why there's such an economic disparity. Right. So until you deal with those, right. those facts, right. nothing's really going to change because people, are no, no matter how much you tell them to come down, right. they're not going to come because they have this fear, this much like you just said. Well, it, but it's, for me, it's not a fear. It's an awareness that a heroin addict will try to take money from someone because they have a, a habit, which has nothing to do with what their race is or what their economic level is, or is be, except that, that if could they be caused by all the money that they have, well, they need they right. need heroin. There's, a, there's various reasons that people so, end up or, going or going down, right, down right. A, a dark so hole. So that would be my concern is because it's now a city and it does look a little bit like places in downtown Boston where you have homeless and you mm-hmm. and there, or Worcester, and there, there are addicts mm-hmm. who will do things to get money but so I my see, concern yeah. would be if if you if you have a way they used to have the salvation army building still where there. they could go still there, yeah. yeah so there's a place where people could go for their needs to well what i find down there and i go down there a lot mm-hmm. and i'm pretty comfortable in cities because i travel a lot for work and things like that but the lighting is better. Right. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. just, it's personal safety. And we had, ten, you know, we've had them come and talk about personal safety mm-hmm. and things like that. But, mm-hmm. you know, really anywhere it could happen. I mean, happen. anywhere you are, you could have a personal safety issue. But ironically, there's an amazing, there's great Brazilian oh, food. Oh, yeah. Across, yeah, I mean, great, great so, I mean, there's, though. it's multicultural. That is. area is very well, multicultural. And the idea and is you've got to, you got to like embrace the multicultural. Yeah. You can't look Absolutely. at it as being a threat. And then okay, how do you? I think over, it's interesting. Yeah, how you do know, you? Over, it's, it's like it makes life much more interesting when yeah, you go course. when you go other places. Yeah. When you travel, yeah. you eat the local food. Oh yeah. You don't want to go over to India and eat pizza. No. But you no. want to try the Indian food. But a lot of people, a lot of people don't have that. It's a fear. I that think that fear that yeah, they have that openness a, to try yeah. things out because of their own insecurities and fear. Right. And again, if you don't address those issues, nobody's going to come. So, so I think what you're saying is that in the in the downtown revitalization process, mm-hmm. you set some things in place, like better lighting or whatever, so that it wouldn't look as right. challenging. And, right. and for me, it's not about the diversity at all. It's more about the drug issue, right. which hits Everybody. anybody. Right. So it's not about who it is. It's right. about what it is. But I think also having... But it sounds like the revitalization addressed those things, so did, that yeah. now places like Fo. Dakau or Dakau or whatever mm-hmm. it is, yeah. and some of the other restaurants in there. I used to go to Chicken Bone all the time because mm-hmm. they had great music there. It's yep. not yeah. there anymore. Yep. Um, but there's another restaurant in there. Right. Yeah. So I think but you're I right. Think parking, it's more like the downtown area for someone that's been down there a lot. You just need to make it convenient, too. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people right. avoid that area because it can be very congested. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what well, I mean? Yeah, so back- that's, 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 a, that's a challenge, you know. Parking. But any, I yeah. mean, any cities like that. I mean, you do have, yeah. you know, like you have to know your ins and outs and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But it... You know, to talk about how to revitalize, I think what I love about 
the community that's down there mm -hmm. is people come from all over the place. Right. It's like a destination now because there's music there, there's food, yep. there's there's a bunch of different restaurants that are down there. Yeah, and it, it's, the Mexican yeah. restaurant is fantastic. Yeah, and yeah. so Where is Tropical. It's across the street from Fotocal yeah. on the other, right next to the park. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. There's, there's a, there's and a, then Tropical is very is rosacea. Bar. It's yes. like um, Brazilian meat. And That's I go there a lot. And actually, it's, it's great. And they have music there, too. Right. So, I mean, right. it, to me, there's, it's there's like... There's a lot there, and there could be a lot more. Sure. And I guess the idea I had for the Cabaret International is I wanted to have, again, it always comes down to the kind of money you have. Sure. Uh, and, and so you've got to be able to spend the time yeah. Yeah. and spend the money to be able to to create the buzz, get people in there. Even if you got to give away food for the first six months yeah. and, and valet parking, do all those things to make it an upscale place and get people down there. All right, so so bring it to Hopkinton mm -hmm. because yeah. we are working really hard on revitalizing here. It's sleepy we had at a, night. I mean, we had a... Uh, committee in 2003 that was charged with um, Downtown revitalization. Mm -hmm. They actually, their mandate was done in 2013, I think. Mm -hmm. And we now have things in place um, where there are roadway changes to make the intersection here more of a, a crossway right. instead of this weird configuration. And then they're putting bike lanes in here mm -hmm. to encourage um, bike traffic. Yeah. Um, I have a multi-page report that are, are recommendations from our revitalization committee. But it sounds like mm -hmm. um, you're saying bring in good quality restaurants, bring in yeah. entertainment into the center. And, and I'll tell you, a lot of times what I do, and I was going to go to Faux a couple times, um, then I will be there because there was something that came across my radar a month ago and that whoever was playing, I said, I've got to go, but yeah. I didn't get there. Mm -hmm. um, usually go to Fireflies in Marlboro because mm -hmm. it's food and bands. Yeah. Right. So there's a brick building here. In right. the center of our town right. that's been empty for a long time, I would love to see that be a little club, mm -hmm. right. you know, with music. Well, and I think, look at, I mean, for example, Grow 110, that is busy all the time. So mm -hmm. I think if no we... No music there. No music. But I mean, I think <laughs> if we we bring something, because there's plenty of people in Hopkinton that want to do things. They mm -hmm. want to get out. Because, like, really, the everything rolls up around 10 o'clock around here, even on, on the weekends and then weekdays, it's mm -hmm. even earlier. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it looks like stuff's going down because there's meetings at Town Hall, or there used to be meetings at Town Hall now. Yeah, yeah. Town Hall flooded. So yeah. we, we have to do everything over on South Street and some old, uh, not old, but previously used um, business. They like okay. it down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, they're great locations. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. That's, yeah, so that's not happening here. Um, some of the things that they, that they um, proposed were um, regarding historic character, aesthetic appearance, yep. village center concept, which I think is what you're talking about, have, businesses yeah. and restaurants here, more specialty shops, mm -hmm. um, expanded libraries. So we've done many of these things. Develop a multi-use community youth center where we haven't had, which I keep saying, right. do that. Well, center, center school, school, like you right said, there. center yeah. school would be perfect um, for that. Parking and traffic, mm -hmm. you know, so that's something um, that. that I think was worked on in Framingham, as I recall. Well, one of the things that we talked about back then in the original Downtown Solution Committee was to basically think about putting a, much like on Huntington Avenue, how yeah. it goes underneath Mass Ave. Yes. They were uh, talking about actually going under the tracks. That would, what a that good would, idea. To avoid some of the traffic. But again, that's a very, that's very, huge, very, huge very budget. expensive. You've got to tie together with the state. Well, and plus the department. construction down there would be five years, yeah, exactly. and nothing would move. Right. You know, for five years. I mean, there's years. a way. There's always a way. But yeah. I mean, that was one of the ideas that that came across and it just kind of right. died. Well, I had heard that down there a long time ago, there was a proposal to either go over or under, yeah. and the business that was down there wouldn't support it. So I guess it was a glue business? Or... Oh, who knows? Who knows? What yeah, so many years ago right. when it was getting busy down there, mm -hmm. they even they talked about it before because it's, you know, it's just kind of a hub. Yeah. I mean, everything kind of comes in in that part of town, and mm -hmm. yep. and it's difficult. 126 and In the train, it's, yeah. it's difficult. And, and again, again, instead of rushing through, there should be places to stop. Yeah, and you go, I totally agree. You know, when I wrote the proposal for the, the Cabri International, I said, well, people before they came, they would stop off and, and, and visit the Brazilian jewelry store, or yeah. they would go here and right. pick up something. Then they'd go eat their meal. Right. And, you know, there's there's got to be more. And there to are do. shops down there. I mean, yeah. there's clothing shops, yeah. and there's you know, and there's, there's a, a great, shoe there's store. great, great, right. great so we, restaurants and, yeah. and bakeries. It's, it's, yeah. Whoever worked on that, and, and I'm going to credit you, no, no, had not. did a great job. Because <laughs> um, we are just in the beginning of this mm -hmm. process, or it's sort of 
at the towards the beginning. We're well, not. Well, it's hard. You have to get a make a place yeah. where businesses want to go right. and where businesses can thrive. Can and thrive. I've seen down there, unfortunately, and I I'm happy when I see a new business. But then we've had a lot of them that can't survive yeah. down there, which is really and I, unfortunate, you know. Cause and parking is one of our problems here. Yeah. yeah. So how difficult was the parking where you were? I remember going through there. There seemed to be street parking. Were there lots of? There there's is a, a there's lot. There's a lot in the back, but right now they're doing construction behind that particular is building. Is that where the fabric place is? Well, was? no, that's there's a lot there. There's yeah. a lot which is there. What they yeah. Use. yeah. There's parking on the street, and there's a lot behind um, the photo cow building. Yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't even know that. It's there. Yeah. And then there's a lot behind where the old CVS was. Right. was excuse me. And when yeah. town halls close, you can park. Over yeah, and then there's and another street lot. Parking there's another lot of block they over. Have a lot more parking than that. Um, yeah, yeah, see, that's the problem. On off of um, uh, is it Franklin Street? Yeah, yeah Franklin. There's, a, there's, there's another big oh, yes. lot there. The it's over by where the Registry of Motor Vehicles used to be. Oh yes. Right. So that's another oh. lot. So there's but plenty there's of parking. But there's a there's a lot of parking. So and for us though, yeah. here we have a parking challenge mm -hmm. because um, they're thinking of they're they're talking about something the downtown quarter Main Street quarter mm -hmm. and they want to uh, in the far distant imagination mm -hmm. they're thinking of sinking the power lines. Right. So there aren't all the mm -hmm. power lines along the road. Mm -hmm. And then also um, getting rid of some parking spaces so that it is more of a flow. And we lost some parking. Instead of a stoppage. Mm -hmm. But um, we're getting close to time. I yeah, think. for 58. Yeah. 58, yeah. Oh, 58, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. recommendations for Hopkinton. Yeah. yeah. Given that you've gone through this would be what? Well, I think you're on the right path. You're doing an evaluation. Um, and again, you've got... I think you've got people here that are more willing to come downtown right. to your downtown than they were willing to come right. to Framingham's downtown. Well, yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. Okay. I mean, because they tend to go to other places right. that are more appealing. Right. And, and more well known. Right. So we need to make some, we need to have some things in the center of our town, like Faux de Cal. Right. Uh, we have Pantai, which is fabulous. We have the pizza place. You know, we need something else. We need. Mm. Do you have an upscale restaurant downtown? No. Every, the 110 Grill is no. out yeah. on, and then yep. you've got the other place, and which Quattro. is down. Yeah. By um, Price Chopper, there's another restaurant. Yeah, Quattro. Yeah. Quattro was very yeah, nice. Yeah, and then so, there's Co. And, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and that's a sort of out of the buffet. downtown. It is. Yep. So you just need to get, get a few things back. Get there a used few to things. be a great Italian restaurant that I used to enjoy. Right. Carbonis. No, maybe. no, this was right on. on Chabella? Well, I don't know. This, this oh, yes. This was a Mama's little small uh, little Trach place, Maria's. like a little antique spot. Yeah. 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 So we're actually running out of time. Okay. Yeah. Well, but thank we you for coming. But we appreciate your your sharing come. your experience. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And um, hopefully that's what we get to have happen yeah. here. And I'm going to recommend so I'm going to recommend somebody for you to come on your show regarding the biomass. Okay. So oh, that would be that. great. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And we'll, we'll see, see you next week. Time. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> thank you. Very